Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, I'll share with you six aspects of digital estate planning. The question I want to pose to you is pretty simple, yet soul-stirring. And that question is this. What will happen to your digital estate when you die? What will happen to your social profiles, personal and business websites, email, etc.? The list goes on. More specifically, if you invest in domain names like I do, what will happen to and with your portfolio upon your exit from this life? I know, I know, I know, I know. I can hear you now just thinking death is hard to think about. And it is. It's often easier, though, to think we'll live forever and escape death as some elusive immortal being. We wish. Yet, the reality is we all have a date with death. I mean, let's be real. We all have to die. And because we know death to be true for all of us on this side of life, I encourage you to take a proactive stance rather than a reactive stance when succession planning for your domain portfolio. So with that, Let's get in and let's discuss these six aspects of digital estate planning. Number one, develop relationships with industry professionals. So one of the things is oftentimes domain investors, um, it can be a hobby. It can be something that you do on the side. And so you really don't put a lot of effort into planning the future. Obviously, everyone loves the buying and Many of us struggle to get the sale, but we love selling as well. But there are some in-between things that if you're going to be paying um, your paying your hard-earned money for um, these domain names, like the least you can do is protect them. And so you want to protect, you know, your what your investment is, uh, not only today, but even tomorrow. So one of the things, like I said, is just getting those relationships established with industry professionals. How do you do that? Well, I suggest, you know, getting involved on, uh, you know, Facebook pages and groups. Um, there are domain name conferences around the world that you should always get to at least one to two a year. Uh, So that way you can actually begin to create inroads into relationships, you know, start following some of the blogs that are out there, uh, the domains.com, domain name wire.com, DN Academy, you know, dot com. And those are just some of the few. You can also get involved in some of the forums that are out there, dnforum.com, namepros.com, and the list, you know, goes on. But one of the things is to get into relationship with some of the industry professionals, Uh, just not even from a business standpoint of selling and buying domain names, but even more so from a personal standpoint. Most of the relationships in this industry are really based around um, personal relationships with business being a byproduct or, you know, domain sales and negotiations and um some of these big deals that come along to people have come along because they sit around a table. They are willing to break bread with one another. They are willing to go out, take a drink, do an activity together, uh, whether it be run, lifting weights, you know, the list goes on. The world is a big, big place. And we have so many different activities. You're likely to find someone that you're able to build rapport with, build trust with, build a life with. And and the reason I say that is because in terms of these developed relationships, they're going, should you, uh, God forbid, you know, pass away from an untimely death, then at least you have these relationships that when people know you personally, they don't want to see your legacy lost. Uh, And so therefore, they're willing to step in and help that spouse help those uh, you know, your children out, your offspring out in terms of navigating um, the waters in terms of either liquidating the uh, domain portfolio or even just holding on to it um, for years to come. And should offers come, these relationships will gather around. You know, they, it's much to be said about this industry in terms of, Yes, there's a lot of uh, bickering and infighting that can occur around certain different topics. But hands down, when you look at it, people for people, 
uh, it's no different than the world. If you invest in those relationships, then those relationships are going to invest in you when you need them the most. So get to some of these conferences, start being active on some of the forums as well as start following and being active on uh, many of the, the sites. And if you don't know where to get started, I you know, one of the places that I suggest for all newcomers to start out is definitely um, namepros.com as well as just typing in domaining. Uh, dot com and just start from there. There are a whole list um, of folks that you'll come across and, you know, you just kind of have to get in uh, where you fit in. But that's one of the things that you want to make sure that you have a relationship and then that your spouse and your offspring at least have know that you have this relationship with people so that they can know who to go to should you pass away. Number two on the list is share and inform your beneficiaries of domain dealings and account credentials. Um, you know, if it is nothing but a one page plan of action, you know, you need to type up what benefit beneficiaries should do upon your death with your domain dealings, your account, and then your portfolio. Uh, be sure to include, you know, the industry contacts that we just talked about or referenced in, in um, aspect number one. And then include include their respective contact information uh, for guidance. And so with this step, one of the main things uh, that we've seen happen time and time again, there are many stories out there to be had. Um, I I remember there was a lady who died from uh, an untimely death. And what do you know, you know, like a year after her death, I believe she had uh, crypto or maybe I think it was actually blockchain domains that came up. Um, and were not renewed. And I think, I think what ended up having uh, the summary of it all was that it was like a hundred thousand dollars lost because, um, I believe it was her son did not renew the domains and was just trying to figure things out. And so make it easy on the folks that you're going to leave behind in regards to these domain names so that they know exactly what, um, you know, what's going on when, uh, when and what accounts you have, how many different domains you have, and just really what the plan of action is. Like I said, it doesn't need to be, you know, a 150 page document. Literally, if it's just one page account, uh, names, usernames, credentials, all of that stuff. Uh, the main thing though, is just making sure that Your people know someone knows whether it's a friend, whether it's your wife, whether it's your children, someone knows what to do. Uh, Number three on our list today is associate a second email address to all domain accounts. Um, And oftentimes you have a primary email address account and that's yours. Well, if let's just say you die of an untimely death and you don't um, leave credentials to your primary email address, which you should, but should you not associate a second email address with it? And so for me, I associate my wife's email address. Now, a lot of you say, well, what if you both die? Well, I mean, I guess it just is what it is. We both die. But I go, if it's likely not going to be the case, but it could very well be the case. That being said, you could either put a spouse or you could put a collective email address where people have access and it's just specifically used for this purpose of, hey, these are things that people need to know about. Should both of us die that it's one email address that, um, you know, three or four uh, close people that you trust have access to. And upon your death, they'll be able to access it. So, and associate that email address. And then the other thing is to make sure that you enable all of the email notifications. I don't care if you get two emails a day. I'd rather have the email notifications on these domain accounts enabled rather than disabled. So because often is the case when they're enabled, they're giving you um, 60 I mean, 90, 60, 45, 30, you know, even week Uh, or a few days before, and even after they expire, they even give you those notifications. So I know that they can be tiresome to receive those, but um, make sure that they remain enabled so that people who aren't quite as familiar with domain 
uh, domaining and domain investing, you know, you got to give these people some time to get caught up to where, you know, you left them. And so be sure to associate that email address and enable those um, email notifications for those domain accounts. Number four, and this one is a critical one that I that I certainly recommend, and it kind of goes back to the story about the uh, lady who um, passed away of an untimely death and then, you know, lost her uh, or rather didn't renew her blockchain um, email, I mean, domain names. So number four is renew domains for multiple years. Um, oftentimes domainers are so busy trying to trying to do all the buying that they really don't think about years out into advance. And so for me, for instance, most of the domains that I invest in, I'm at least into those domains in terms of an investment for five years. I know that can be costly, but at the same time, I also use it as a tool of do I really want to invest in this domain name? Because if not, then I'm just wasting my money and I don't want to just, you know, uh, register or buy it for a year and then, oh, OK, well, it's just eight dollars. No, like I'm going to be fully invested in this five to 10 years. That being said, um, you know, I choose to renew some of my domains even as far out as 10 years out. That gives um, more than enough time for beneficiaries to figure things out. If you're on a year to year basis, I mean, and let's say that, you know, you're just looking at your bank account or whatever um, on a day to day basis just to renew, then likely is the case if you don't, you know, if you don't already have a will or something and bank accounts go into probate and they're frozen, these domain names are literally going to not be renewed, and they're going to go back into the open market. And if you pay thousands of dollars for them, you just lost your investment um, just like that. And so I, I, I certainly encourage you, plan accordingly. Make sure that you renew at least, give a minimum of at least three years, uh, you know, at least three years, Um so that that buys your your people time. Now, like I said, I personally do it for five and sometimes even 10 year periods. Uh, and so I, I, I just want to make sure that I buy, you know, my wife, my kids um, enough time that they can, you know, reach out to people um, and do what's necessary to realize, you know, a profitable uh, flip or uh, a profitable development um, or some sort of profitable transaction in regards to our uh, domain portfolio. In addition, one thing I want to say about, um, you know, renewing your domain names is I, I recommend also using like a shared credit card um, account. Now, I'm not really. So hear me when I say this. Use credit responsibly with domain investing. There are too many times people are out here um, using credit to finance all these big purchases, yet they're not paying off their cards. So I'm not saying that that's everybody, but I'm going, hey, be sensible, be responsible when using credit in domain investing. I would say use a, a shared credit card um, only in the state that should you not have a will or something happens and all your accounts go into probate, at least if you're on a shared account, things can still be renewed. Um, so, you know, just make sure that um, you're, you're using some sort of, uh, you know, shared credit card or even just tying your domain accounts to a PayPal that's then tied to your uh, your bank account. And so make sure you just have multiple um, multiple options set up on those domain accounts with different registrars. And so for me, what I choose is to have my bank account um, tied to it. And so that way that if it if if it renew, if the domains renew using uh, PayPal, then it, that PayPal is tied to uh, the bank account. And I don't necessarily have to worry about you know, using uh, the credit card. So that's number four is to make sure that you renew domains for multiple years. Let's see here. Number five, safely store and keep account credentials updated at all times. So um, I, I use a spreadsheet for this and 
There is danger in that in terms of obviously it's electronic, so it could just disappear. Or it could get hacked. Many things can happen. That being said, I go poke holes in it all you want. The reality is get my message. Make sure that your account details are written down and saved in a in a safe split a safe place a safe place um where people you know will know what's going on and can actually access, you know, list all account details, username, password, uh security questions. Um, you know, the whole list basically from A to Z and, and and include an action plan. And so there's that one page plan again, kind of coming into place that you list all these account details and you list what what uh, needs to happen to them. You know, leave no rock unturned when it comes to uh, safely storing and keeping your account credentials updated. When I go to change a password, I open up the spreadsheet. I put it there. My wife has uh, access to it. Um, and when I when I actually update it, you know, print it out. You know, that's another option. Yes, it's stored electronically, but when you update it, print it out and then put it in a uh, safe safe place. Uh, man, struggling to say that. Say that five times. Put it in a safe place, whether that be a vault or, um, you know, some kind of safety deposit box, whether that's at the bank or whether it's at your home or, you know, off off site. Make sure that you do that. Um, and another thing to note about this whole listing of um, account details is one thing to pay attention to. And I, I've thought about this and I know that it could probably be a bug that could bite, you know, bite somebody in the butt is that when you, I guess, set up your account, oftentimes, you know, it's, it's good to have two-step or two-factor authentication associated with your account. But one of the things, you know, that I thought about is that may actually pose a problem, um, you know, should the deceased person's phone not be active anymore. And so one way, obviously, if you're using a, an iPhone or, you know, you use Mac products, what I recommend is that if you or, you know, if you're a domain investor and you use Mac products, then I recommend that, hey, if your um, if your phone number is associated to the account that you're using two step or two factor authentication, then what you may want to do is also um, associate another device to your, you know, to your Apple account or uh, you know, to your, basically to your messages. And so for instance, my phone is associated to one of the registrar accounts and because it is, it'll shoot a text message to my phone number. Well, because my iPad is associated to that, then if let's say I get into a car accident and my phone, um, you know, let's just say, Hey, I, I died. God for God forbid, in a car accident that where the car actually burned up, I burned up, then obviously my phone burned up. Well, if they, if they go to access my account, they wouldn't be able to access it. Why? Because I only associate it to one device. If I associate my phone and my iPad, and we hope that my iPad is not with me, um, or I, you know, I associate my computer to that, then what would happen is once it, uh, once they log in, they try to uh, log in rather, and then that authentication occurs and it sends that message out. Then they're able to access it, not from my phone because that's burned up, but from other devices. And so all that to say is make sure that you think about, you know, what would happen should I die? How would they, um, how would my family get past a two-factor authentication should I die and my phone is destroyed for some reason or another? So that's just one more thing to think about when you think about safely storing and keeping account credentials. You know, put a plan of action together for how you're going to um, be able to address, you know, security questions as well as the two step or two factor authentication. So last but not least um, is one that I recommend whether or not you have domain names uh, and that's have an attorney prepare a will or a trust. There is no reason for you to pass through this life to, um, and you may look and say, well, I don't really have that much. And I go, 
if you if you have a place to live, if you have clothes to wear, um, you you need a will. You just do. And I know one of the arguments will will be, well, hey, that costs too much. Um, and what I what I tell most people is to think about this. Think of how much it, it's going to cost your beneficiaries to lose everything that you've worked for, whether little, whether great. You worked for it and it shouldn't be lost, um, especially just through negligence of due to our own part and lack of planning. So, you know, do a quick search for your local, you know, local list of attorneys and make sure you can you can use a generic attorney. But then there are also um, attorneys that specialize in domain name, legal issues, agreements and, you know, disputes. And so they can actually help you prepare the, a will or trust for your domain portfolio, as well as this. It may also be that um, this given attorney you know, should be used by your beneficiaries in terms of going about figuring out whether a transaction, you know, uh, one is legal, but then two, they may be able to provide guidance there. And so that's one of the things that, you know, you just need to do in terms of having a will, having a, a trust, you know, documented again, Domain names are very much like uh, physical real estate, you know, with the exception of, hey, they're used in the virtual space. So make sure that you do your best to list out um, those domain names as assets. Obviously, one of the things that's going to come up if it is a generic, uh, you know, lawyer that just only specializes in wills and has never dealt with domain names, they're going to, you know, say, well, those really aren't a value. Um, or we can't really turn determine the tangible value of those. And so either way it goes, you just need to have them listed that, hey, this domain portfolio. And if you have um, high profile domains, you might want to just name them out each in the will and or the trust and state what should happen upon your death. Because the worst thing that could happen is all, all of your accounts are frozen and go into probate and then it takes weeks and months. And during those weeks and months, something needs to be renewed that doesn't get renewed and then you've lost it. Um, and here it is. You spent thousands of dollars over these years for these given investments and someone gets it on, um, you know, pretty much fire sale or pennies on the dollar. So, you know, with that, um, I, I like I said, I would consider it a good starting point just to touch base with an attorney um, and just see, you know, what their specialty is. And then once you go from there, you'll know whether or not uh, you want to deal with that attorney in terms of just setting up a uh, will or trust specifically for your domain names or for your entire uh, estate. And so those are six aspects that I hope that you would consider in terms of your digital estate planning. Like I said, we we all must die. We all must die. So that being said, it's better to prepare uh, and have a plan and not need to use it than you did not prepare and you needed a plan and you didn't have it. So take those six steps, apply those six steps, and I hope that they serve you and your beneficiaries, your family, friends well and with that we're out of time thank you listeners for tuning in to kickstart commerce where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business please subscribe to this podcast via itunes google play stitcher or podbean last but not least please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the weekly newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy thanks and that's all for now